Well, hi, I'm uh, responding to some requests I had about where to buy materials to make fighter kites. Well, <clears throat> there are probably a lot of places to buy them, but where I buy mine is for my spines. I normally use bamboo. Sometimes I use carbon fiber, but I prefer bamboo. And this website, One World Kites, if you click on the uh, kite uh, building materials tab, then you get to this site here, or this page, and they have mylar, they have paper, tissue paper like was used in India for making the Indian fighter kites. And they have bamboo. <clears throat> they have many kinds of bamboo. The one I like mostly is because uh, my spines are rarely longer than 24 inches. The bamboo spine 24, 10 pack is uh, 790 plus some shipping. So let's say a dollar a piece, not very expensive. <clears throat> Now you can use these when you buy them, just as they are. But I shape mine, shave it using a utility knife and find that it works better for the kite flight performance that I'm looking for. But that'll be totally dependent upon you. Now, I don't always use bamboo. Sometimes I use carbon fiber. And when I use carbon fiber, I like to use the flat carbon fiber rods or flat stock. Now these are solid carbon fiber pieces that are various widths and various thicknesses. And I usually use 1.12 width by 0.034 thickness. These are 48 inches long. And sometimes I use 166 by 0.04 thickness. Once in a while, I even use the 0.177 0.057 thickness, uh, but it depends on the wind I'm building the kite to endure and various things, but this is where I buy them. This website has reasonable prices, reasonable shipping, and good service. I don't make any money from telling you about it. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I've been asked, where do you get it? And then for my bows, I always use carbon fiber or 99% of the time. And I like to use either a 0.05 diameter or a 0.06 diameter solid carbon fiber rod for my bow. Now these are 48 inches long, so normally you could get two bows from one piece. And I like 05 and 06, but you could get 07 or 04 or any thickness you want and test them out. The thing about carbon fiber that I love is it's really lightweight and exceedingly durable, both for the spines and for the bows. If you crashed a fighter kite severely into the ground and it had a carbon fiber spine, the spine would unlikely be damaged, be very rare that it would be damaged. 
with a bamboo spine after you slam the kite into the ground a few times there's a good chance it might break and so then you'd have to remove it and replace it with a new spine into the kite to get the kite to fly again which isn't a big deal but it does it is one of the things that could happen where carbon fiber is a little more durable it's actually uh, also a little bit lighter weight than an equivalent length of bamboo when you're talking about spines. So that's another issue that might be important. When I make a kite skin or kite sail, I really love polypropylene film. It's a gift wrap type of a film. I buy it at papermart.com and I go to the gift wrap section and I click on cellophane wrap and metallic film. And this is what I get. Then I scroll down and I find solid colored metallic film sheets. Now this material comes in sheets or rolls. You can get it rolled or sheets. I like the rolls. Some prefer the sheets, but either way, uh, it's relatively inexpensive, very durable. And the thing I love about it is it's waterproof. It's 0.8 mil thickness. It's very thin but strong, made of polypropylene. And so I typically use this for 99% of my kite skins or kite sails. Now, when you go to the website here, you can see they have, these are uh, by the sheet and you can buy a hundred pieces of it and they're 27 cents each and each piece is 18 by 30 inches which will give you many times two kites from one piece and even if it didn't it's still a pretty inexpensive way to uh, get a sail or a skin material for your kite and they also have this in rolls i don't see it right here oh yeah right here and it's the same material it's just in a continuous roll of either five foot length 30 inch width or 100 foot length and prices are very reasonable shipping at this website's reasonable so this is what i use the thing i like about this material aside from the fact that it's very durable and waterproof is that it's easy to decorate you can change the appearance of it easily with either uh, bleach or with uh, acetone acetone will remove the color of the metallic film and it'll show the silver that's behind it which is on the back side of the film and so it offers an awful lot of opportunity for changing the uh, decoration i guess you would say or the appearance of a kite you can also add uh, markers or various inks and so on to it and change its color that way but i like removing the color and exposing the silver from underneath and uh, i think it looks cool and it's easy quick and uh, 
It doesn't add any weight to the kite. So those are the three things that I use. The metallic film, carbon fiber rods, and bamboo. Now, you may or may not want to use bamboo. Bamboo requires a little bit of carving or shaping or working with it to get it to function like you might want. Now, carbon fiber also does on a spine, a carbon fiber, the flat carbon fiber, uh, the thing about this is that you need to be able to bend a spine in a fighter kite and to bend it with bamboo you can just bend it and it'll stay that way most of the time sometimes it'll straighten out and you have to rebend it and if the humidity where you're flying is quite high then the tendency of the bamboo to become straight after you bend it is a little more likely. But with carbon fiber, these, these flat pieces are straight and you have to figure out a way to bend them. What I do is I tie a line near the nose and then near the wingtip line, or maybe towards the middle of the kite, and make it a, a, a line there I, that will allow me to adjust it so that I can tighten it and therefore bend the spine. And I can bend it a little or a lot or whatever, it's variable. I use a uh, a knot that is uh, adjustable and you can use various methods to do it but I find that to work pretty darn well. Some people drill with a dremel and a very tiny bit a hole through the flat carbon and through that hole, that's where they attach their tension line to create the bend. I normally don't do that. I normally just tie the uh, tension line around the spine. I puncture the skin on each side of the spine at the nose and at the center, and then use super glue to hold the tension line in position and then bend it, bend the spine using the tension line to the degree I want it bent for whatever wind speed I'm dealing with. Now with bamboo, I don't have to use that tension line. So that's kind of a nice feature for me. It's a little easier. Putting a tension line on carbon fiber is not difficult, but it does take time and it's a little fussy. So once you get that, you're all set. But with bamboo, you don't need it. And so I think that's probably my laziness is probably what makes me drift towards bamboo more than carbon fiber. But I hope this information is useful for you in finding uh, information about materials that work well for making fighter kites that are successful at flying, competing, 
and so on. Uh, you can use, I mean, like in the kite skin or kite sail area, you can use Tyvek from uh, postal envelopes or UPS or FedEx envelopes. You can use paper, you can use any number of materials. But the lightest and the strongest and the most waterproof and durable that I found is this metallic film. Now, when you make the kite skin, one thing you have to be very careful about is the way you cut it. If you use a razor knife or a razor blade to cut the skin, cut out around your template, you cannot stop the cut. You have to make it all in one smooth motion. If you leave a nick or any kind of slight aberration in the cut edge of your kite, <laughs> this film, this is the one negative about this film, it will, when you're flying it, you may not even notice the nick when you're making the kite, but when you're flying it, it will show itself by splitting itself right across the front of the kite. The kite skin will just separate, like explode almost. So I prefer to use a soldering pencil, 25 watt soldering pencil, and I use it to cut around the perimeter of my template. And what that does is it builds a small melted reinforcing area on the edge of the kite skin that I cut so that it strengthens the edge rather than weakens it. And I prefer that. And I have never had a problem with it splitting or exploding or anything like that. Uh, so that's what I know uh, so far about these materials and hope they are, this information is useful for you and help you explore your kiting, fighter kiting uh, journey. I cer it certainly has helped me. I, I love it. And, and I use all these materials all the time to make my kites. Hope you do too. And thanks. I'll talk with you soon.